Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy Inauguration Day. Uh, I'm Janet Irwin, Head of Education at the Ulrich. And I want to thank all of you for taking some time this morning on this important day uh, to join us in celebrating our new suite of exhibitions and the reopening of our galleries tomorrow at 11 a.m. Uh, when planning your visit to the museum, please take a moment to look at our health and safety protocols that are on our website. Your safety is our utmost concern. And we have all of the protocols in place to make your visit meaningful, safe, and joyful. That's what we're all looking forward to. And being able as a staff to share your experiences in the galleries with you uh, once again after a very long uh, time off. Um, we will be continuing our uh, Allworth Virtual Series of Public Programs through July, and you can see the full lineup of programs and register for those on our website. And we want to uh, thank the KCAIC for the generous funding uh, we've been awarded in support of our 2021 All Rich Virtual Programs. So we've got, we uh, are opening a suite of four exhibitions, uh, Gordon Parks, I2 in America in our Barron Gallery, Renee Stout Ghosts in our Amsden Gallery, the 23rd Faculty Biennial, it's all part of the process, in Polk Wilson, and Solving for X Equals Identity, Sharing Matrilineal Memories at WSU. I do wanna make all of you aware that uh, the Gordon Parks and Renee Stout exhibitions were conceived as part of a citywide partnership entitled African-American Art of the 20th Century with arts partners, the Kansas African-American Museum, the Ulrich, and the Wichita Art Museum. Each museum will feature exhibitions that recognize and honor the work of African-American artists. The Kansas African-American Museum will feature Through Our Eyes, perspectives of African-American life in the 20th century, drawn from their collection, January 5th through April 24th, on view of the Wichita Art Museum, February 6th through May 23rd, will be African-American art in the 20th century, Harlem Renaissance, Civil Rights Era and Beyond, organized by the Smithsonian American Art Museum. With visual art, dance, music, storytelling, and academic content, Arts Partners has developed classroom learning opportunities for students of all ages in concert with these art exhibitions. Each organization will also present a broad range of public programs. So check out their websites for more information on those events. As many of you are aware, Wichita State University is one of the premier research institutions on the life and work of Kansas native Gordon Parks with 178 photographs in the museum's permanent collection and Parks' papers housed in special collections at Alba Library. Gordon Parks, I Too Am America, explores Parks' photographs of children, many uh, drawn from his Life Magazine photo essays on poverty, segregation, and civil rights. The title of this exhibition is the last line of a poem by Parks' good friend, Langston Hughes, I Too, which was uh, first published in 1926. And if you'll, I thought I might read that poem if any of you are unfamiliar of it, uh, unfamiliar with it. I too sing America. I am the darker brother. They send me to eat in the kitchen when company comes, but I laugh and eat well and grow strong. Tomorrow, I'll be at the table when company comes. Nobody will dare say to me, eat in the kitchen, then. Besides, they'll see how beautiful I am and be ashamed. I too am America. 
Our curator, Ksenia Gershwin, organized uh, this iteration of Gordon Park's photographs into five themes, photographing families, Flavio, community, resistance, and role model. In 1942, Parks moved to Washington, D.C. to work as a photographer, photographer for the Farm Security Administration, where he met a cleaning lady named Ella Watson, who was a member of the FSA janitorial staff. In addition to making the iconic portrait of Watson, American Gothic, which we have in our collection, uh, Park spent four months documenting her life, including the two grandchildren uh, that lived with her. In 1967, Philip Coonhart at Life Magazine um, asked Parks, why is there so much racial tension across the country? And why are Blacks rioting in the big cities practically every month? Well, Park's response was, Phil, the bumblebees do not, the bumblebees do a lot of buzzing and stinging if you put fire under their nests all of the time. So the photographs and accompanying story for this photo essay, A Harlem Family, as you can see on the slides here, are some of Park's most emotionally poignant work. Park's followed one Harlem family, the Fontenelles, which included Norman and Bessie and their eight children and documented their everyday life, exposing their struggles with racism, unemployment, financial hardship, hunger, and domestic violence. The painful memories of their misfortunes and untimely deaths stayed with Parks throughout his life, and he wrote and spoke about it often. In 1961, Life sent Parks to Brazil to photograph a story on Latin America that the magazine uh, built on the cover with Cold War uh, geopolitical fear mongering. Shocking poverty spawns reds. Yet Parks' own approach was, as with most of his uh, photo essays for Life magazine, it was deeply empathetic. Um, look at the life of the Da Silva family in Rio de Janeiro in a favela or a slum with the family's oldest son, 12 um, year old Flavio, emerging as the story's protagonist. He was the family's anchor and caretaker for uh, his six younger siblings despite his young age and his sickness. After, after the original story ran in June of 1961, an outpouring of contribution, contributions from life's um, white middle-class readers allowed the De Silvas to move out of the favela and to send Flavio to the US for two years to get treatment for his life-threatening asthma and malnutrition. And Parks accompanied Flavio on this journey from Brazil to Denver. And he stayed in, in touch with Flavio and the De Silvas um, for decades to come. Uh, shortly after the 1955 Montgomery bus boycott, life tasked Parks with photographing racial segregation in Alabama. And so working with reporter Sam Yeti, uh, Park took this, took this series of photos uh, for a photo essay entitled The Restraints Open and Hidden, which appeared in the uh, September 24th, 1956 issue of Life Magazine. And for these photographs, Parks followed uh, the family of Mr. and Mrs. Albert Thornton Sr. in Mobile, Alabama, and their relatives, the Kazi family in the neighboring town of Shady Grove. And these photographs document four generations of the Thorntons and Kazis and their daily struggles with racism, 
and segregation in the Jim Crow South, as well as their deep pride in the accomplishments they achieved and the strength of their community, despite all odds. And I'll, I'll mention that many of you have probably seen some of these photographs from this photo essay in previous exhibitions we've had, especially the 2016 exhibition of Park's work. Um, they were shown at that time in black and white, and we do have many of them in both black and white and color. For this exhibition, we, are, we have pulled the, the color photographs. Life Magazine had been trying to penetrate the Black Muslim world for years uh, without any success. And in 1963, uh, Parks, who was still the only African-American staff photographer at Life, received exclusive permission to photograph uh, the inner workings of the Nation of Islam. And this uh, religious and political movement advocated for a total separation of Black life in America from the racist majority white society. And again, the fate of children was a central concern for Parks in this project. His photographs show uh, Black Muslim children being educated both at home and at school, practicing their faith within their families and their community and protesting police brutality, as you, as you see in one of these photographs on the screen. Parks wrote at length about the disagreements with, about his disagreements with the philosophy of the Nation of Islam, but also emphasized that his popularity was a response to the conditions created by white America from which Parks too had suffered. In 1966 and again in 1970, uh, Parks created uh, for life in-depth profiles of the boxer Muhammad Ali. And at the time, Ali was a highly controversial figure uh, due to his outspoken opposition to the Vietnam War, support for civil rights for Black Americans, and his membership in the Nation of Islam. Parks's ability to show the depth and complexity of Ali's character contributed positively to his public image. The two photographs shown here reveal Ali as someone who could both be warmly affectionate towards children and embody the physical and emotional strength that make him a role model for many to this day. In November, as part of the Billboard project, we had uh, John Edward Mason from the University of Virginia present a talk on Parks's relationship with Ali and the photographs that that. Uh, that were taken um, uh, during his time with Ali. And if you weren't able to join us for that virtual talk, it is available on our YouTube channel. And I would highly recommend um, uh, spending some time with it. John is, is an amazing park scholar and it was a fabulous talk. We have five programs, five virtual programs that are in support of the parks exhibition. And so these are all available on our website, on the programs page. You can read all about our presenters and, and uh, register for those, register for those uh, programs. And do it soon, do it early, get it on your calendar. Um, I will mention, uh, uh, next month, Senior Wednesday on February 17th, we're going to, ha we're having Angela Bates uh, talk about children of the promised land. And so uh, we're excited to have her and she's part of the Humanities Kansas Speakers Bureau. Um, it should be a fabulous talk. In our Amston Gallery, 
Um, we have again drawn from the collection uh, with Renee Stout Ghosts. And Renee Stout is a contemporary American artist whose work is, is renowned for its reflections on African-American heritage and visual culture of the African diaspora. And she encourages through her work, self-examination, self-empowerment, and self-healing. And this exhibition highlights her 2012 portfolio of monotypes, ghosts, in which Stout expresses the ideas and visual language of Haitian and American voodoo and hoodoo. And to help audiences better understand the connections that Stout's work makes with the art and traditions of Africa and African diasporas, this exhibition also incorporates six objects from the collection of the Holmes Museum of Anthropology at WSU. And all six objects come from the Yoruba culture of present day Nigeria. And I'd like to give a, a big shout out to three students. Um, Brittany Beck, a graduate student in WSU's Museum Studies program, contributed research and writing on the, on the Yoruba objects. Carter Bryant and Nellie Elliott, two of the museum's Mary Joan Wade undergraduate interns contributed research and writing on Renee Stout's work for this exhibition. And I wanna thank, of course, the Holmes Museum um, for collaborating with us on this exhibition. And um, I should mention too, that Renee's work is also included in the Smithsonian exhibition um, at the Wichita Art Museum that opens February 6th as part of the citywide um, partnership. And again, uh, we have programs uh, in support of the Renee Stout exhibition. Um, in April, Rochelle Meineke will be uh, presenting on the sacred objects of the Yoruba for our Senior Wednesday on April 21st. We'll have Renee Stout here uh, to speak about her work on April 13th. And we're hosting um, our second annual Art and, Fe Art and, Feminis Art and Feminism, excuse me, Edit-a-thon, uh, which will take place on Saturday, March 6th. And more information on all of these is on our website. Next up is the 23rd Faculty Biennial. It's all part of the process in our, in our Pope Wilson Gallery. And the Faculty Biennial is a tradition in its 46th year on the WSU campus. And it's the longest running series of exhibitions at the Aldrich Museum. The 2021 edition will showcase the faculty's work in art history, art education, ceramics, curatorial practice, drawing, graphic design, painting, photography, printmaking, sculpture, and new media. And the biennial's theme, it's all part of the process, um, seeks to prompt reflections and start conversations about each faculty member's personal process, highlighting the diversity of activities that contribute to creative practice, from research to studio time to interactions with colleagues and students and beyond. We have put together 10 uh, always virtual faculty talks uh, in support of this exhibition and we've paired them and they will take place in the morning uh, at various times out of 10 or 11 a.m. from February through April about mid-April. So I hope all of you can join us for those. Again, register on our website. And our final, our fourth exhibition this spring is in collaboration with uh, Shayla Clausen, Associate Professor of Dance and Dr. Twyla Hill, Professor of Sociology. Um, solving for X equals identity, matrilineal memories at WSU. And it is the fourth exhibition 
in the Solving for X series and is an extension of Clawson and Hill's grant funded research project, Kansas Lineage, that is preserving the stories of important women in the Wichita community and assisted living communities. And at, we're, this is our second year in, in putting on our Solving for X exhibitions in the Gravely Gallery. And it's uh, the intent of Solving for X is to highlight and visualize research being done on campus. And so we're really thrilled to be working with, with Shayla and Dr. Hill on this project. And this exhibition is participatory and is focused on collecting memories of home from WSU students, faculty, and staff. We are also inviting alumni and formal fa former faculty to submit uh, for this exhibition as well. And they ask us to answer two questions. What do you remember about your mother's home? And what do you remember about your grandmother's home? And we invite everyone to submit images as well. And these written responses and images from all over campus um, are being installed on an ongoing basis in the Gravely Gallery. So it's an organic and evolving exhibition. Um, so if you are a WSU alumni this morning, or former faculty, um, I invite you to scan the barcode on the screen. It'll take you directly to the submission form and you can share with us your memories of home um, and any images, any photographs, you know, that have meaning to you. In May, on May 4th, uh, we'll have two performances on the front terrace outdoors, the front, the front terrace of the Ulrich Museum. And uh, students uh, in, the, um, in the dance department uh, will perform original choreography um, in response to this project. And so I hope you can all join us for that as well. And last but not least, the museum has new hours. And so I wanna make you all aware of that. We are now open Monday through Saturday, 11 to five. We will be closed on Sundays. And we made this decision partly uh, in order to be open uh, and have the galleries open when uh, students are on campus and classes are visiting the museum. And so uh, please make note of that and, and, uh, and I, think, I think that's it. Um, now I can take a moment and bring all of you in. I'll have to do it quickly. Let's see. And this will allow all of you to turn on your cameras and your mics and join me. And you can ask any questions, share your thoughts, tell everyone Happy New Year. We can celebrate the peaceful transfer of power today. Let me stop, let me stop screen sharing and we'll bring everybody in here. Sorry, this is so slow, everyone. Carolyn, hi, Corey. Hello, Dana. Hi, Corey. So nice to see you. 
nice to see you and everyone else too. Um, thank you. For, I had no idea you were doing so much stuff there all at once at the Ulrich. Uh, we are. We've got to keep busy, right? Yep. <laughs> um, I wonder if before you go, you could share that first screenshot where you had the collaboration. Yes, I'd be happy to. I was a little too slow with my camera. To oh, sure. No, here, let me do that. I'd be happy well, to do that. I don't mean to take your time now. Oh, no, no, I can, I can, I'm happy to do that. How's that, Corey? Perfect. Everyone, I'm still moving through, so patience, patience with me here. And of course, you're all invited to turn on your cameras if you're, you know, yeah. rather not, that's fine for you. <laughs> did you get that, Corey? I did, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Hello, everyone. Does anyone have any questions about, about you know, 2021 at the Ulrich? Does ever, would everyone like to share your uh, New Year's resolutions? Yeah. No, no one? <laughs> My, uh, Jana, mine, mine uh, usual one is to try to refrain from being a pompous ass as much as possible. Again. Oh, dear. Oh, my oh. annual. That's your annual? That one repeats every year? You're hilarious. Oh, who just said that? Don. <laughs> Don Rogus. Yeah. Sorry, Leslie. <laughs> Any questions, thoughts? Hi, Carter. <laughs> hey, how are y'all? Happy New Year, everybody. Th hey, thanks for being here today. Yeah, it's, a, it's an important day. <laughs> Have you all had the inauguration on over here? Yeah. And, I, and I had half of your attention this morning. <laughs> That's all right. I understand. I'm not offended. Believe me. You're all so quiet this morning. All right. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna shut you down then. If you, you know. Took me a while to get my camera on. Um, one of the questions I posed, Janet, is I'm assuming. All four of the galleries are going to open tomorrow for uh, viewing, but we are not going to have any kind of a formal opening ceremony. That is correct. It is a quiet opening. So at 11 o'clock, the galleries are open. Um, we, you know, a few of the health and safety protocols, we, you know, we're, we're, we're going by Sedgwick County, by Sedgwick County's recommendations, the university's recommendations. And so, you know, groups will be limited to 25. Uh, we will require everyone to wear a mask. Uh, those that live in the same household, of course, can, uh, can stand closer together. Uh, otherwise, you know, we ask that everyone stay six feet apart. Um, we're gonna limit people in our elevator to four. Um, so no parties in the elevator. And we're keeping everything super clean, but no big party. Okay. I see Joanna over there. Hi, Joanna. <laughs> um, are we, I'm assuming that Whitney is not going to commute from Florida. So no. you replace Whitney? So Whitney's still working for us remotely. Ah. And Jana or Joanna has stepped in to sort of be
be her right hand man. So oh, he's the boots on the ground person here <laughs> around our finances and it's working out beautifully. Good. In the meantime, we're doing a search. Uh, the position offering closes tomorrow at five. We have six applicants and a search committee ready to narrow them down and move forward. And Whitney is spending a lot of time on the beach. So I noticed we're that. All very happy for her. If you're going to go to Florida, you, you better be on the beach or you may as well stay here. That's right. That's right. We're really happy for her. We miss her terribly, though. <laughs> Did that come as a surprise to the rest of you as much as it did me? All of a sudden, but hey, we're in Florida. Yes, out of the blue. Wow. Well, good but, you me. know, I think it happens that way. Her husband was applying for a position, and you don't know, you know, yeah. until you know. Yeah. Well, any other? Uh, any other? Well. Jana, is there any plans to start looking at uh, tours? Well, Don. Yeah. I'm bored. I'm <laughs> no, bored. bored. I know you're bored, but I care about all of you. Yeah, I know. A lot. And I'm not willing to risk your health. I, I, I understand. You know, not yet. Not yet. Okay, so if, you know, I, we have, we are going to allow uh, small groups if, if the occasion arises, which I suspect it, it will not in any great number, right? Yeah. Yeah. K through 12 is still, especially in the public school system, not allowing field trips, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. But and it, when that arises, I will do it myself. Mm. Okay. And 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 we will all start talking together about about um, re revamping uh, docent training and getting everybody ready to roll. Fingers crossed for the fall. Right. Okay. That's my plan, Don. And I know, I know you guys are probably missing everything that everything that you do. And I wish I could fix it. Yeah. But we're gonna hold on tight. Don't leave us. Mm, no, not gonna <laughs> Although we will miss Pat. Yeah. And we'll miss Craig. Mm -hmm. Maybe Pat can do virtual tours from Montana. <gasps> Pat. <laughs> you could get one of those computer things with the face on it and I could roll around. On <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Oh, Pat, we may have to talk about some virtual tours <laughs> from Montana. I'd be up for that. <laughs> That'd be fun. Yeah. We could talk, actually, we could talk with everyone about doing virtual tours. So keep that in mind. Absolutely. All right. The countdown is on. Yeah. For, big, for the big moment. I hope you're all excited. We are. I'm flying my flag. My flag is out on the <laughs> out on the front porch. That's mine. All right. All right. Love you all. Bye bye. See you soon. Love you Good to see all of you. Bye. bye. Thank it's you so much. You. You bet. Take care. Bye, bye. 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 bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you. You bet.